Yeah. Well, America has become victim to unspeakable acts of violence. One would think the people committing such horrific crimes are insane. I mean, that's what we say. What are yeah. they, nuts? But is that necessarily true? Dr. Gerald Post is a professor of political psychology and international affairs at George Washington University. He joins us from our D.C. Bureau. Good morning to you, Professor. Good morning. Well, you know, we, we are learning that, um, that these terrorists, some of them may have uh, moved to the United States as many as seven or eight years ago. Clearly, this is a completely different kind of terrorist than we've seen in the, in the past. Wouldn't you say that, doctor? Yes, and these are not crazed psychotics. I've just finished a project interviewing 35 uh, Middle Eastern terrorists, more than half of whom were religious uh, Islamist uh, uh, terrorists. And uh, what is really quite striking is these are psychologically normal, quotes, uh, uh, individuals. They've subordinated their own individuality to the group. And, and, and it is a group which is led by a religious extremist uh, who has selectively taken verses from the Koran uh, that inspire and make not only not immoral, but a sacred obligation to strike out in the name of Allah. Now, we look at some of the, at the, the, the names of these people, the faces that we see in the newspaper, and, and Steve and I both looked at it and said, what kind of crazy, insane person would do this? Who is it that you recruit, and how do you recruit someone and say, you know what, I need you to fly a plane into a building, killing everyone on board, everyone in the building that you can, and yourself? Well, what is striking is, and, the, and indeed the people we interview would, would object to the phrase suicide. The phrase they use is istashad, which means martyrdom or self-sacrifice in the service of Allah. Let me... Uh, give you a representative quote. This is from the uh, individual now serving 46 consecutive life sentences uh, in, in Israel for his role in the wave of uh, terrorist uh, suicide bombings uh, in, uh, in Israel before the 96 election. A suicide bombing is the highest level of jihad and highlights the depth of our faith. The bombers are holy fighters who carry out one of the more important articles of faith. And these, are, these men are given great honor, and they consider this uh, uh, really uh, uh, the fulfillment of their destiny. Doesn't it automatically, um, if, you, if you die in, in a jihad, uh, especially by committing one of these acts, doesn't that sort of, isn't that a guarantee of going to the highest place? This, this uh, yes, in the Quran, it yeah. indicates that individuals who die in the service uh, of, of, of Allah uh, will have the highest place in, in paradise. I want yeah. to emphasize, these are very idiosyncratically chosen verses by these uh, radical uh, clerics and radical religious leaders, in contrast to mainstream Muslim and in contrast to the Quran in general, which is a very merciful and loving text. Just as we see people use the Bible at times in That's the same right. way. And in fact, there are Christian fundamentalist terrorists, there are Jewish fundamentalist terrorists, there are Sikh fundamentalist terrorists. In each of the great texts, there can be found articles in those texts which not only justify killing, but in fact give it a sacred significance. Well, uh, the doctor, uh, this morning the FBI has released a list of these 19 kamikaze killers who uh, commandeered these jet planes on, on uh, Tuesday. And what strikes me about the list, and this has not been confirmed yet, but th there are a number of these guys have the same last name. So it looks like they're either from the same family or they're brothers or they could be fathers and sons. I isn't it extraordinary that... Uh, that uh, you know, and not just uh, not just loners, but oh, parts of families have banded together in this jihad against the United States. Well, in fact, many of the uh, terrorists whom we uh, we interviewed uh, in in prison had been recruited by their brothers and were and were were carrying on a family tradition. And part of that was also seeking to redress wounds that they believed the family had experienced at, at, the, uh, at the hands uh, of the infidels. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, 
as President Bush has uh, has made it clear, we're on a world war against terrorism. Uh, once, eventually, if Osama bin Laden, doctor, is behind it and they take him out, uh, they bring him to justice. He will still have some uh, lieutenants and captains out there, and I'm I'm sure we'll go after them as well. Let's say they they clean the cupboard. All these guys are gone. Will they there still no have cleaning the uh, there is no cleaning the cupboard. There still will and be I people that, out there, right? And I think the war metaphor is a really unfortunate one. This is not a war that can be won with winners and losers, uh, and nor can we deter uh, with the threat of violence individuals willing to give their life that mm -hmm. promotes martyrdom. This is a war for people's minds. Yeah. And uh, and the and the goal really is to. Uh, to deter individuals from becoming involved in these groups in the first place, to facilitate people leading, leaving these groups, to, uh, to weaken the hold of the leaders upon these groups. And that, and that is not accomplished with yeah. missiles or nuclear weapons. So true. Dr. Gerald Post from George Washington University, just a couple of blocks from the White House. We thank you, doctor, for joining us this morning. My pleasure. All right.